What about the other areas of the skull, like the forehead and else? Ning asked. Those are all surrounding by jungle with strong beasts. The two sects might not look eye to eye, but they work together to protect the rest of us from the beasts, the little kid said. Ning asked a few more questions regarding the state of the city if there were any physicians in the city or not, and what was usually the accepted amount of gold and silver coins for various minor stuff. According to the kid, while there were doctors, they were all expensive and normal people couldn't afford them at all. Aside from that, the things around here seemed to be priced about the same as the back in Starsight City. As for the state of the city, the small kid didn't know any internal politics, only that the citizens were happy. I guess that's enough to know about the city, he thought. All right, last question before I pay you, Ning said. The kid looked at him in desire and expectation. Do tell me, why is a little girl like yourself trying to act like a boy and deceive the people you are working for? The little kid's eyes stopped showing all forms of emotion and suddenly, her face started getting pale. WW what do I you mean? I am a boy, she said. No need to hide kid. I'm a doctor, and can easily tell who is what. If you don't want to tell me why you are doing what you are doing, then it's okay. Here's five silver coins. You can leave, he said as he handed her a payment. The girl took the five silver coins. Together with the one earlier, she had been paid six silver coins. She hesitated between staying and leaving. Ning saw that and asked, What's the matter? Um, are you really a doctor? She asked. Yes, I am, Ning said. Um, how, how much do you cost? She asked timidly. Hum, that would depend on the injury and the different materials that would have to be spent during the treatment, so I can't tell you exactly right now, he said. Um, what about a paralysis? How much would that cost? She asked. Paralysis. I would have to check the patient. There are many causes of paralysis. Some can end up costing over 20 gold coins, Ning said. The little girl's face immediately lost all hope. Even getting a few gold coins was hard for her. This was the first time her spouting out a high number had worked. Usually, people only paid a silver coin or two, and that would be gone by the end of the day when she had to buy food. She felt like tearing up once more. And some can actually cost nothing, Ning said. Huh? The girl asked in confusion. How can a treatment not cost anything? The doctors make us pay five gold coins just for some small fever alone, the girl said. Huh? Five gold coins for some fever? What sort of idiot would pay that price? Ning said in surprise. The girl got timid again and said, as idiots who know nothing about medicines and diseases who have to do what the doctor says or they won't treat us. Ning was getting a little angry after hearing that. Do you know a patient? Show me the way. I will see what I can do, he said. The girl's eyes shined brightly. She caught him by the hand and started dragging him through the open streets. They were still in the jaw area, and she took him to a small house that looked more like a cottage. She knocked on the door. A small seven-year-old kid opened the door and was excited when he saw the girl come home. He was about to say something, but then saw Ning and instead said, Brother, welcome back. Ning couldn't help but smile. This brother-sister duo seemed to want to keep the fact that she was a girl from everyone. He knows, Anvi, she said and took Ning to the room where her father laid on the bed. The man on the bed slowly moved his head to the right as he said, Anya, are you Ba? Who are you? He seemed to be scared that a thief got into their house. Father, he is a doctor I brought, Anya said as she walked inside. Doctor? The man's face immediately got angry. We don't need those goddamn rip-offs. Go back your fraud. We aren't going to pay you anything, the father screamed. No, father. He is a new doctor that just came to the island. He isn't one of those stingy doctors from the marketplace, Anya said. Ning had enough of their talk and walked forward. Let me check you, he said as he started poking around all over his body, asking if he felt any pain or discomfort when he did so. The father, after learning that Ning wasn't one of those frauds, answered all of his questions truthfully. Ning quickly understood what the problem was. I can heal you, but you will have to suffer pain that will make you feel like you are in hell while I do, Ning said. You, can, heal me? For what price? The man asked. Hmm, normally I would ask for gold coins, but right now, I need a place to stay. How about you give me one of your rooms for the next two months or so for me to live in? Ning asked. You, want to live in a place like this? The man asked. Yeah, I just need a place to guard myself against the sun and rain. I am not looking for anything fancy, Ning said. Yes, father, let's do that, Anya said from behind. 
Very well, if my daughter says so then I agree, the man said. Ning turned around to the two kids and said, All right, I am going to heal you father. It will hurt him a lot and he will scream a lot, so you guys stay out. Ning had locked the door from the inside and asked the man to bite on the corner of the pillow. After that, Ning started massaging. The man seemed to have gotten into a small accident after which he started to stop feeling his lower body. It started off numb and soon he couldn't move it at all. From what Ning could tell, the man had most of the nerves responsible for his lower body trapped inside his different vertebra. So, the signal to and from his legs was cut off. Ning was trying to massage his body such that he would hit the different vertebra and have them separate themselves. Opening up the vertebra would cause intense pain, but he didn't have anything for anesthesia, so the man would have to suffer a bit. Arg! The man screamed for a total of five minutes as Ning continuously used his ten fingers heavenly massage technique on the old man. After five minutes finally, the man fainted from the pain, and at the same time, Ning was done as well. He opened the door and walked out to find the two kids waiting by the door with teary eyed. Oh our father, is he going to be okay? The little girl asked. Yes, he is fine. Come, let's go away from here. Your father needs to rest, Ning said and took the kids away. In a different room, he asked the girl, how old are you? I'm 11 years old, and my brother is nearly 8 years old, she said. What about your mother? He asked. The girl sneakily looked at her brother, not wanting to say anything, but the brother spoke up this time. Father says that she died while giving birth to me, he said. Ning felt sad for the two kids. So, why were you dressed like a boy? Are girls not allowed to work on this island or what? Ning asked. No, they can. But if someone were to find out that I was a girl, they would soon ask around about my family and learn that my father was not in a condition to work. Then, there will be many people coming to our house, trying to buy me off with the promises of gold and healing my father, she said. You could just say no, right? Ning asked. No, the girl said as she shook her head. I doubt I could have refused. Especially when my father's body would be healed if I got taken away. I would have done that in a heartbeat. Besides, the people that usually make those sorts of offers are not somebody you can refuse, Anya said. It seemed there was more to this town than what the girl let know at first. An hour or so later, the father woke up and walked downstairs by himself. F father? Both the kids were both rejoiced and surprised. The family of three got into a group hug and Ning just watched from the side. The father then let go of his children and walked up to Ning before falling onto his knees and started bowing to him in thanks. Ning quickly caught him and brought him up. The little girl made some tea and the four sat around drinking it. They showed Ning to a room that seemed to be what the brother was using previously. Ning wasn't particularly picky, so he told the family that he was going to cultivate and not to disturb him. Finally, he stayed down on the bed and closed his eyes. He hadn't sat down to think about what had happened the last three days. The bugs, the invasion, the deaths, the kills, the aftermath, and leaving the city. He didn't keep track of how long he stayed on the island, but it was definitely close to a year. While he wasn't attached to it, he was still a little sad to let it go. Slowly, he started cultivating. He had gained a few different insights on cultivation in general and was using it to try and break through. Still, he was quite a few steps away from reaching a bottleneck, but breaking through with the number of insights he knew now would be very easy. He cultivated his mind and body at the same time he was cultivating his chi. Soon, night came and went and dawn showed its face the sun rose up and ning could see it from his window he walked out of his room he could hear some arguments from the living room of the house he walked in to see the little girl and the father in a heated argument but i can help the little girl said not anymore now that i am healed you will stop working i don't want to see my children doing any work the father said ning could understand what the problem was he listened to the two of them argue for a little while more before he said, I am planning on opening a small, cheap pharmacy outdoors. How about letting your daughter be my assistant? A pharmacy? Doctor, you know by now, your kind doesn't have a lot of reputation around here. If they learn that you opened one here, they will come in protest immediately, the father said. Let me worry about that, Ning said and took the little girl before walking out. They walked to the market as the little girl showed him where he could find the different furniture. He already owned a bed, so he just bought a few chairs and desks and boards. Things he would need to make a temporary shop. He went back to the little girl's home and started building a small shed using the materials he had brought. 
he set up the different furniture and put up a board in front of the building that said, Physician Ning's Treatment House, cheapest in the city. He didn't get the chance to be a physician back in the Starsight City, so he would become one in the Deep Skull City. Please come get yourself treated at Physician Ning's Treatment House, don't bother going to those frauds in the market, Dr. Ning can treat anyone for a very cheap price. Come, come, get treated right now. Anya was doing her best to gather patience for Ning, but it just wasn't happening. Half a day had gone by but no one bothered looking towards his shop. But he wasn't worried. Anya, come back, you don't have to keep shouting, he said. Huh? But Dr. Ning, if I don't shout, how will they know to come here? She asked and went back to shouting out. Finally, a person came to visit. It was an old man whose legs seemed to be having some problems. He limped his way to Ning and asked, I is it true that you don't take a lot of money? Ning nodded and said, I only take the price of ingredients and a little more for service. I do not take anything else, he said. The man was still skeptical but he decided to take the chance. I got bit by something in the sea yesterday in my right leg. I did not know if it is poisonous or not, seeing as I have lived until today, it probably is not. However, ever since yesterday, I have been slowly losing movement on my right leg. It still feels everything pretty clearly, but the movement is kind of hard now, the old man said. Hmm. Ning looked at the man's legs and started checking them. On his lower thigh, there was a small cut that was surrounded by skins that had been turned purple, violet, and pink. Ah, I see, Ning said in realization. It seems you were bit by a tricolored octopus. You actually don't have to do anything, as the bite is not poisonous and will only make your legs unmovable for a few days, after which it will go away on its own. However, if you do want to cure it immediately, I will get some ingredients from the market right now and treat you. It should cost you about one gold coin and four silver coins, Ning said. Wait, wait, the man said. Will I really be healed if I don't treat it at all? He asked. Yes, the toxin in your legs will get washed in a few days and you will be okay, Ning said. Um, how many days might it take? The man asked. Hum, tricolored rainbow stings usually last for five days. Since it's been about two days now, you should be able to move your legs in two more days, and on the third day, you will be able to move it quite well, Ning said. I if that is so then can I not take the treatment? The man asked. Of course, if that is what you want then you can do that, Ning said. Um, how much will I have to pay you now? The man asked. You can pay me one silver coin for the diagnosis, Ning said. Ah, only one silver coin? The man was surprised and hastily took out the silver coin and paid before leaving. He was afraid of Ning suddenly changing his mind. Ning smiled looking at the man and called Anya. What is it Dr. Ning? She asked. Here for your work today, Ning said as he handed her the silver coin he got from the old man. Huh, I don't nay. Just shut up and take it. Get something tasty for yourself and your brother, Ning said. The rest of the day no other customer arrived so Ning closed the shop and went back to his room and started cultivating. The next morning, he went to the market and bought a bunch of ingredients he knew he would require for treatments. Then, it was back to treating people. A few more people arrived and got treated. Ning took as little money as possible from these people. Same for the next day and the day after that. Learning that there was a doctor in the village that treated patients at low cost, people started flocking to Ning's shop. Furthermore, once someone was massaged, they spread the news, and one after another, more people arrived for massage as well. Soon, his shop would have a very high number of patients throughout the day. The little girl Anya was truly surprised seeing how many patients there were and just how much they were paying. Even when Ning earned two to three silver coins on average, throughout a single day, he would make around 25 gold coins throughout the day. Of that, he would give her about five gold coins each day just because she helped with the queue of the people. After seeing firsthand just how much money he was making, the little girl mustered up some courage and asked him, Can I learn to be a doctor too? Ning thought for a moment and said, Sure. Why not? I will write some books in my spare time that you can read and learn. I will also teach you the massage technique. That should be very easy. So, the next few weeks, Ning spent some of the time writing the different medical knowledge he had into simple books and handed them to the little girl to read. He made absolutely sure to let her know to hide these books at all cost. He even gave her a storage bag so she could keep the books. As a bonus, he handed her his divine vortex devouring technique and the earth shattering heaven tempering art as well. Teaching a little kid about cultivation reminded him of his time with high C all over again, 
he still wished that he was alive and that he could go see him if possible. Anya was a talented girl too. As soon as he taught her something, she would understand it. At times, he started doubting if she had an eidetic memory too. However, she would sometimes forget things, so it proved she did not. Soon, a few months passed and Anya was on her way to becoming a full-fledged doctor herself. Master, there is a man outside with a broken arm. Can I diagnose him? The now 12-year-old Anya said. It had been a few months since she started learning medicine directly from Ning and had thus started calling him master. He was also her cultivation master, but Ning didn't want to be called a master by a girl who was in the third Qi condensation realm, since he had only reached the eighth Qi condensation realm and was still a month away from reaching the ninth realm. Hum, sure. But you won't get to treat him if it's anything advanced, Ning said. Okay, Anya said as she walked out of the giant room. The hospital was now huge. After getting a lot of patients, Ning had expanded the facility. Anya was also working in the hospital now and was used to handling patients with non-serious problems. She did what volunteers did back in Physician's Hall. So, since his bone is cleanly broken, we can make a healing paste with abyssal tree sap and a bald turtle's blood essence, right? She asked. Normally yes. But see that his arm is broken right from the joints? Your paste wouldn't work. Instead, you need blazing chicken's feathers, spirit pear's vine, demon caterpillar's precious silk, ground up tetraheaded snake's skins, hanging tree's sap, and upside down gourd water. Only that paste can fix his broken arm, Ning said. Ah, oh, I see, I see, Anya said. All right, go out and treat the rest. I will patch him up, Ning said and started to make a paste using the different ingredients. He proceeded to treat a few more patients until Anya came to the room and with her were four different buffs, bare-chested men. Doctor, are you treating us like crap? We come here to pay and get treated, yet you have a kid who is not even a teen check us. Are you looking down on us? One of the men said. Ning was a little surprised at the aggressiveness of the men but said nothing. Instead, he asked Anya, what's wrong with them? I, I do not know master, Anya said timidly. They said they had a stomach ache and I checked for it but I couldn't figure out why at all. Anya had tears in her eyes cause she wasn't able to diagnose the men properly. It's okay. Just sit back and I will diagnose them, Ning said. He called each man forth one by one and checked them. He asked them various different questions and looked for signs of any physical trauma but he couldn't find any. From what I can tell, you guys don't have anything serious. If you really do have a stomach ache, just drink some warm water and it should go away in under a day, Ning said. Oh. Then what about the money? One of the men asked. It's a silver coin each for the diagnosis, Ning said. What? Bull SHT. You didn't even treat us and you want so much money? I was right. This doctor is nothing but a phony. We should have gone to the proper doctors in the marketplace. They're the righteous ones that don't take unnecessary money from everyone, the man shouted. Ning was a little surprised by the man's sudden shout. He felt like something was off. Ah, I see, he thought. He quickly checked the men's cultivation. While they didn't have any chi cultivation, they had body cultivation. So that's what is going on, he thought. I am sorry, dear customer. I tried to take money from you for nothing. How about I treat your broken shoulder for free? Ning asked. Huh? Yes, that's more like it. You should. No, wait. My shoulder isn't BR. Crack. Ah. Uh. The man screamed as he had never before. The entire hospital shook from his cries. The other three saw that Ning had his left hand tightly grasping the man's right shoulder. Hey, what do you think you, Xing before they could even finish their sentences, Ning brought out the sword and pointed right at them. The men got scared seeing the nice looking sword. Why you won't dare use that? We're from the Red Tiger sect. If you attack us, you will be the enemy of our sect, the men said. Oh yeah, why don't you try me and see if your sect will avenge your death, Ning said. The men got a little more scared. The man with the broken shoulders was on his knees, crying, desperately trying to remove Ning's hands from his shoulders, but he was failing to at every single attempt. The men started to understand that Ning was strong and not someone they could mess with. Ning too had only started this trouble after checking their cultivation base. He had seen that they were all about four-fifth level in body cultivation, with the man he harmed having the highest of them all. By beating him first, he deterred the rest of the gang. P please spare us, the men said. Spare you, come, how about this? I will let you go after treating your stomach ache, Ning said. R, stomach ache? Um, we don't have any. We, 
we were just trying to mess with you. We now see that we were wrong and we'll just leave like that, the men said. Nope, can't let you guys leave like that. If I say you get a stomachache, you get a stomachache. Shoes, do you want to get punched in the stomach by me, or this little girl? Ning said while pointing to Anya. Um, the little girl, they said, it was an obvious choice. All right then, you, come forward, he called a person. The man came forward and stood there. Anya, go and punch that man as hard as you can in the stomach, Ning said. Anya was confused as she didn't know if she could do what he had said. Um. Come on little miss. You can hit me. I am ready, the man said. Anya finally lost all hesitation and walked forward. She barely came up to the man's chest with her height. She stretched as far as she could and delivered a single, perfect punch to the stomach. Ning let go of the man's shoulder and watched the other man fall to the ground while holding his stomach. Ah, he screamed as loudly as he could to rid away the pain. The other two men looked at the man and then onto the little girl in fear. Next one, Ning said. He called forth another one of the men and asked them to get beat. They were about to refuse, but once they saw Ning's fist, they willingly came forth. Anya hit both of them on their stomach once each and they too fell to the ground in pain. That's what you get when you get punched by someone in the third chi condensation realm and fourth level of body cultivation, Ning thought. Anya's cultivation speed was quite fast in general, but her body cultivation was beyond quick. In just a few months, she had managed to break through four different levels of body cultivation. She was on par with the thugs in front of her. All right, let me diagnose you guys, Ning said and started to list out the problems with the different men and prepared medicines for them. All right, eat these and you will be fine. Ning said as he handed the four of them their individual medicine. The four of them took the medicines and turned around to leave. Wait, Ning said. Um, what is it, sir? One of the men asked. Where is my payment? Ning said. The men started to get scared again and quickly took out a bunch of gold coins before giving them to Ning. They didn't dare stay behind any longer. Ning chuckled a bit and went back to treating the patients. Finally, once he was done with the hospital work, he went to his room and started cultivating. Ten more months, he thought. It had already been six months since he lost the system, four months since he came to Deep Skull City. He would now have to somehow live his life for ten more months without trouble. However, even if one didn't look for trouble, trouble came knocking on its own. A few days later, another group of people came to the hospital. Even from far away, Ning could tell that they were strong. He walked to the front of the hospital and waited for these people to speak. He quietly checked their cultivation and realized that while their chi cultivation was quite poor, their body cultivation was in double digits. They're stronger than me, he thought. Are they here to take revenge on those four from before? Are you the doctor named Ning? One of the men in the group asked. He was big and buff. He had a head full of white hair but that didn't stop him from looking like he was in the prime of his life. Yes, I am Ning, he replied. My name is Prezo, and I am an elder from the Red Tiger sect. Is it true that our disciples got beat here a couple of days ago? He asked. Ning didn't like where the situation was going but still decided to answer truthfully. Yes, that is true. I beat them, Ning said. Hmm, is that really true? The man frowned as he asked again. Of course that's true. I really did beat them. You can ask them yourself, Ning said. Hmm, that is the thing, doctor. I did ask them, and they said the one that beat them was a little girl, the man said. Oh, if you meant who hit them, then yes it was the girl, but she did it under my order, Ning said. Oh, so it's true, the man's eyes started shining. What is going on? Ning started to believe the situation wasn't how he thought it was. Can I see the little girl? The man asked. Ning frowned. What do you want? He asked in a serious tone. Oh, we don't come with malicious intent. Please, can we just see the little girl? Don't worry, we won't harm her in front of so many civilians. While we might not look like it, we care for our reputation too, Prezo said. Ning thought what he said made sense, so he called Anya to the front. Anya timidly walked to the front in front of so many members of the Red Tiger sect. She knew how ferocious they were and was thus scared quite a bit. Hello, little miss, what is your name? Prezo asked. A hey, Anya, she replied. Miss Anya, can you tell me if you beat the four men about a few days ago? Prezo asked. Not all, only three. Master beat the last one, but that was only because they were trying to fake their injury and ruin our business. We didn't attack them for no reason. They asked for it, 
Anya tried to explain why her master had to do what he did. I see, I see. Then can you come here and hit me too? Prezo said as he put forth a hand for Anya to hit. Anya hesitated and looked towards Ning. Ning started to suspect what was going on. He looked towards Anya and nodded. After getting the go, Anya walked forward and hit the man's palm as hard as she could. While her little preteen hands weren't very large, the force they packed behind them wasn't weak either. With a fourth level body cultivation, the sound her fist made on impact was loud enough that the other members of the Red Tiger sect that were standing behind them were flabbergasted. So strong, he murmured. They had expected the girl to be strong, but at some level underneath, they couldn't believe that a little girl could have the same level of cultivation base as their inner sect disciples. Prezzo looked at his own palm in shock. While he didn't feel any pain, the slight numbness still remained. He couldn't believe her power either. However, he managed to wake himself out of the shock and looked straight at Anya before saying, Miss Anya, would you like to join the Red Tiger sect as a direct disciple of mine? I, Anya couldn't say anything. On one hand, it was an incredible opportunity, on the other hand, she already had a master. Calling someone else a master while having one was disrespectful to the original master. Ning decided to ask some questions himself. Mr. Prezzo, what exactly is your status in the Red Tiger sect? He asked. I am the third elder of the sect, behind in status only to the second elder, first elder, and the sect leader, Prezzo said. You said you want to take Anya as a direct disciple, right? What benefit would she get? Ning asked. Little Anya will be a direct disciple of mine, so she will learn a lot of different things from me directly. With her current cultivation base, she will become an inner sect disciple directly, and soon due to her age, may even end up becoming an influential figure in the Red Tiger sect, Prezzo said. Ning thought for a moment. What do you say Anya? He asked. This was an amazing opportunity for her and he wanted her to take it. I don't want it, master. I have you as a master already. I don't need another one, she said. Silly girl. I can't stay here and teach you every day. I need to live my own life too. Besides, your life will be awesome once you join the sect. Given how young you are, you will become an amazing person in the future, Ning said. But, but, I don't want to leave my father and brother, she said. Prezzo walked forward and said, Don't worry child, the sect will take care of your family too. We have a special housing area where the family of our important sect members live. We will keep your family there too. Think, Anya. If I am not here, how are you going to take care of your family, Ning said. Finally, Anya's eyes showed determination and said, Okay, I will do it. On her own, she drooped down her head and bowed to her new master. Ning smiled and then looked at the third elder and the rest of the group and said, I am weak right now, but I won't remain such forever. If I ever come to find out that you or your sect has mistreated Anya, I will personally come wreck havoc. The elder saw Ning's serious face, and while he didn't necessarily believe Ning could do that, he still nodded in respect and admiration. I will put my name on the line and promise that we will treat her the best we can, Prezzo said. Very well. You guys leave for today. I will come tomorrow morning to deliver her directly to the sect, Ning said. The Red Tiger sect members hesitated for a bit, but then they left. Ning closed the hospital for the day and decided to have Anya spend the rest of the day with her family. They let know the father-son what had transpired and soon, they were rejoicing too. Hearing that his daughter would be a direct disciple to one of the elders in the Red Tiger sect, the father was beyond happy. The family shared a hearty meal that night and went to sleep. The next morning, Ning stored all of their possession in a storage bag and left with them. He walked with them for more than half an hour before he reached the gate to the Red Tiger sect. Prezzo seemed to be waiting for them, and when he saw Ning and Anya, his face lit up in happiness. He made a disciple show the father and brother to the sect housing area while he took Anya towards the inside. Anya left his hands and returned to Ning one last time to give him a hug. She started crying. Hey, it's okay. I am not going anywhere so soon. I will come to see you from time to time. Just study hard and remember what I taught to okay. He said. Anya nodded and finally left with the third elder. Ning now didn't have anything to do. He mindlessly returned back to the house, but it was empty. He opened the hospital and focused his attention there. It worked for a few days, but soon he realized it wasn't so fun, he wanted more with life. Sigh, I should just go to the marketplace and set my hospital there, he thought. So, he did it. Over the next couple of days, he let the village folks know that he was going to shift places and on a fateful day, left the place. The house would soon be occupied by a brother of the neighbor. 
He set his new hospital in the middle of the marketplace and very soon, business was booming. He was the cheapest doctor around and had a much better attitude, so soon, he was stealing business away from the other doctors away as well. They were already angry that Ning had taken away their customers from the city, and now he was taking the customers away from the marketplace as well. But they couldn't do anything. Ning wasn't doing anything illegal, so they couldn't complain to the two sects. As for kicking him away, they had already tried that once and failed. There was only one thing they could do, and that was begging Ning to stop his practice or at least increase the prices so that the others could compete. But Ning didn't listen to any of them. In the end, the doctors couldn't do anything so they threw caution to the wind and went to complain to the two sects. For the first few days, the sect showed no reaction as to whether they were listening to their complaints or not. However, after a few days of relentless complaints, even if the sect didn't care at first, they were now curious as to how a single person could disrupt the entire medical industry. So, they finally decided to check what the fuss was all about. The Blue Dragon sect was going to take some action. Ning bandaged up a man's forehead after applying some sort of paste under it. All right. The swollen parts should disappear in about three days. After it stops hurting, you can remove the bandage yourself, he told the man. Thank you, doctor, the man said and paid Ning a bunch of silver coins before leaving. He welcomed another patient but was a little surprised this time. A cultivator? He thought as he felt the aura of the man walking in. Seventh Realm. He thought and quickly checked the man's cultivation base. It was in the eighth Qi condensation realm. So close, Ning thought. Hi, what can I help you with? Ning asked. The cultivator was really polite and explained what the problem was. Ning listened with full attention and checked the person. He then prepared some medicine and asked for a price of five gold coins. The cultivator paid the amount without hesitation and left. That was weird, Ning thought. For some reason, cultivators never came to get checked. It was always mortals. It was almost like there weren't that many rogue cultivators in the city at all. And the few that did come were never this strong at all. However, thinking that this was a one-time event, Ning decided to forget it. However, the next person that came through the door was also a cultivator. Another eighth realm cultivator. He was shocked. The person was a woman who had a stomach problem. Ning gave her medicine too and she politely thanked him and paid him before leaving. This was a very weird experience for Ning in this city. He treated not one, but two cultivators in a single day. What's going on? He wondered. Anther cultivator with 7th Chi condensation realm came in and asked for treatment. Ning complied and treated the man. After him, another came, and another, and another. By the end of the day, he had treated over 30 cultivators, all of whom were at least above the 7th Qi condensation realm. Just when he thought it was over, however, another person came. However, this person didn't feel like a cultivator. Finally, a mortal, Ning thought. But when he looked up and saw the man, he was sure he had made a mistake. Just from the man's long white beard and blue robes, he could tell that he was a cultivator. As for why he had no aura, Ning checked him, 5th Foundation Establishment Realm. Ning's eyes went wide. So strong, he thought. Hello, Dr. Ning. How are you doing? The man spoke with an amicable smile. I'm fine. May I ask who you are? Ning said. My name is Palio, I am an elder of the Blue Dragon sect, the man said. The situation reminded him a lot of what happened with Anya. Are you here to recruit me as a disciple? Ning asked. Palio's eyes went a little wide as he wasn't expecting Ning to understand his purpose. Still, he managed to smile and said, close, but not quite. Hum? Ning didn't understand the meaning. I am here to recruit you as a doctor for our sect. What do you say? The man asked. Doctor? For the sect? Ning asked curiously. Do you want to exclusively take me as sect's doctor? Ah, it's good that you understand. Yes, that is exactly what we want to do. You see, the local doctors complained. Just that you are in the way of their business just because of how good you are. We wanted to see, and it turns out you are really good, much better than the doctor we currently have. So, Dr. Ning, I would like to formally invite you to the Blue Dragon sect to stay as an exclusive doctor, Palio said. Ning fell into deep contemplation. I still have eight months before I get my system back. I was doing this all just to pass time, so. What benefits do I get? Ning asked. As a sect doctor, you will get all the materials needed for treatment paid by the sect. You will get free access to all the books and techniques in the sect library, aside from the forbidden ones, Palio said. 
That's not very bad I guess, Ning thought. However, what Palio said next sealed the deal. Finally, you will get five spirit stones every single month. Sorry, spirit stones? Ning's eyes went wide. He had heard of those things, but they were incredibly rare. Even though it only cost about 100 gold coins, just finding one was impossible. Where do you guys get the spirit stones? Ning asked. We have connections with a major sect up north near the mainland. We get a steady supply of it from them, the man said. Ning didn't need to think anymore. I agree. Polly Zero left with a smile. Ning promised to go to the sect exactly one week after he finished treating the people that were waiting for him. He made sure to let everyone know that he was leaving. Some were saddened by it, some angry too, but they couldn't stop him from doing what he wanted to do. He made sure to go around the different doctors in the area and threatened them to return if he ever learned about them hiking up the price. Once everything was ready, a week later, in the morning, Ning walked to the right eye of the Deep Skull Island. The Blue Dragon sect was hidden a little away from the markets in the thick of the forest. Once Ning walked up to the gate, he could see the tall walls of the sect going all around it. That's quite a big sect, he thought. He had heard a lot regarding the two sects on the island but had never personally seen them. Finally, he walked up to the guard and told them why he was here. The guards didn't waste any time and immediately went to call Palio. Palio came out of the gate with a happy smile, saying, Good morning, Dr. Ning. Welcome to the Blue Dragon sect. Backquote. It's just a little sprain. Don't practice as hard for a few days and you will be fine, Ning said as he patched up a girl's sprained ankles. She had been training for the past few days a little too excessively and ended up spraining her ankle. Ning had had many such disciples come to him for treatment for the last three months. Some had minor injuries, while others had major. He made sure to fix everyone properly each time. The problem however was that they would come to him every single time they had a problem, which they had a lot, so, he hadn't managed to find a lot of time to cultivate. What little time he did get, he used efficiently and easily broke through to the ninth chi condensation realm. Now, he was simply one step away from reaching the foundation establishment realm. Still, he was happy with what he was doing, since by now, he had managed to gather 15 spirit stones. He could keep it as currency for later on or simply just use it and gain a tremendous amount of chi at once. Thank you, doctor, the girl said and left the room. Another disciple soon followed, this one was a boy. Doctor, I think I sprained my right arm. The wrist hurts a lot, he said. Let me check, Ning said and checked the wrist for damage. As expected, it was in fact very damaged. What's up with you guys? This is already the third such injury I've seen today. You guys seem to be practicing quite hard today, Ning said. Of course Dr. Ning. We need to get a high rank in the upcoming competition or we won't be able to take part in the triennials at all, the boy said. Oh, you have a competition coming up? I'm quite surprised honestly. I can't wait to check it out, Ning said. Yes, doctor. Just watch me, I will enter the top 10 for sure, the boy said. Ning didn't even know who the boy really was as he only focused on treating them. Still, he cheered him on. By the way, who gets to take part in this competition? Only core disciples? Ning asked. Well, it's a combat focused competition, so, it's mostly going to be core disciples, the boy said. And how many participants? Is there anything for the winner? Ning asked. No rewards, actually. Well, the reward would be the opportunity to go to Hub Island to take part in the triennial tournament. As for participants, it's going to be a competition between the Blue Dragon sect and Red Tiger sect, and of them. Only 15 will get to go. It's an island versus island event, so there won't be many, the boy said. I see, Ning said. He quickly patched up the boy and sent him away. More disciples came after him with similar problems and Ning healed them all. He was quite surprised by how excited the disciples were for the competition. Once night fell and no more disciples came, he finally left the clinic and walked out. His room was above the clinic as well, but he needed some fresh air for now. It was evening time and the sun had just gone down. The clinic was in the center of the sect, along with other major buildings. Ning only had to walk a small distance if he wanted to go to the library or the training plaza. He had looked through the assortments of techniques that the Blue Dragon sect had and had even liked a few, but he had had no time to practice any. If he had to say a bad thing about his current situation, then it would definitely be the lack of time. He roamed the sect for a while. He saw the many disciples still training throughout the sect. Some were using swords, some spears, some bows and arrows, some whips, 
some staffs, and a lot of other non-conventional weapons. Some even used non-weapons during their practice. He saw a person use a flute during practice. Ning didn't know how he fought, but he did and that was interesting. Some used beasts to fight too. All in all, there was a variety of fighting styles that could be found in the sect. Ning returned back to the clinic and went to his room to cultivate. A few more days passed and it was finally the day for the intersect competition. He was let know about the competition a day ago since he needed to stay in the fighting arena for emergency medical care. He complied and let them know what he needed. The sect was under fanfare as the disciples were celebrating the competition as if it were a festival. They really love this competition huh? Ning thought. A massive arena of sorts was prepared around the fighting area that could hold a massive audience. People started arriving that filled the audience pretty soon. Most of the seats however were filled by the disciples of the two sects. The competition was to be held in the Blue Dragon sect, so the disciples from the Red Dragon sects had started arriving. The disciples of either sect were quite easily distinguishable. The uniform of the Blue Dragon sect was blue, while the Red Tiger sect was red. Even then the Red Tiger sect didn't wear any uniforms for most of the time and liked to be bare-chested, which was also quite easily distinguishable. The arena slowly filled and the important peoples of both of the sects started arriving as well. The two sect leaders of either sect as well as a few important elders filled the podium that was set high up. They consisted of the elders like Palio and Prezo as well. Ning tried searching for Anya, but it seemed she was kept away from the competition. Ning approved of it. Showing a bloody battle to a little girl wasn't necessary. Soon, everyone had arrived and a giant horn blew marking the start of the competition. One of the elders of the sect walked up to the fighting arena and started giving a speech. The elder was going to be the main host of the competition and would thus be in charge of the battles today. Ning looked around and was quite surprised at how many disciples from both sects were ready to fight here today. Can they even finish it all in a single day? He wondered, however, he soon realized that there was going to be more than a single battle at a time. Ah, so that's how they are going to speed up the competition huh? He thought. Over 50 disciples from each sect were called up to the stage and made to pick up some pieces of paper with numbers on them. The matches are going to be one-on-one -on -one battles where everyone that got the same number will fight against each other regardless of the sects you come from, the host said. The purpose of the competition is to select the best of the best amongst you guys to take you to the triennial tournament that will take place in the Hub Island in five months' time. The ones selected from this competition will be put through rigorous training so that you can end up being the best you can be in the next five months, the host said. The disciples got excited hearing that such change would come soon to them if they could only succeed right here. Fifteen disciples from this group of two sects right? That's not really a lot, he thought. He wondered how Starsight City handled this when they had three different sects that could make up the fifteen disciples list. Pure Cleansing sect probably didn't get a lot of spots since they aren't so good at fighting, Ning thought. Suddenly, the arena started separating, surprising Ning who was staying to the side. A few elders walked out from inside, both of them consisting of the two sects. Four of them walked onto the stage while the rest walked up to next to Ning and stayed there. Ning greeted them and they greeted back. Ning was wearing an elder's clothing so they didn't dare be disrespectful. They struck up conversations and Ning soon came to learn that they were actually referees for the competition and would switch with the ones on the stage from time to time. Finally, the competition started and eight disciples were called on stage. Five of them were from the Blue Dragon sect and three from the Red Tiger sect. Without even the robes, just based on their body types, the two disciples were easily separated. The Blue Dragon sect disciples had a lean body and usually held some sort of weapons, while the Red Tiger sect disciples were body cultivators with big and buff bodies that didn't like using weapons. The four pairs were randomly chosen by themselves so, four of the disciples from the Blue Dragon sect and two from the Red Tiger sects had to fight their fellow disciples. However, that didn't mean they were going to go easy on them. As soon as the competition started, the disciples immediately rushed to attack the opponent as fast as they could. This was a contest of raw strength and skill, and as such none of them held back. They used various weapons and fought with each other to the best of their ability. The four referees looked after the competition on the four different stages and made sure the disciples didn't accidentally hurt each other more than they should. Two of the fights ended normally, while the other two continued on. Different abilities flew through the air and another one came to a close as well. The final one was between the two sects disciples and the disciple from the Red Tiger sect nearly heavily injured the disciple from the Blue Dragon sect. Was it not for the elder stopping him in time, the outcome would have been disastrous? 
Ning immediately stood up to go check on the disciple, but everything was fine, so he returned back to his seat. Brother Ning must really care for the disciples of the sect. You ran up there so quickly, one of the elders said. Haha, it's nothing like that. I was just doing my job as the doctor of the sect, Ning said. I see, I see. By the way, how old are you, Brother Ning? You don't look very old, the elder asked. Me? I am. Ning hadn't calculated his age in a long while, around 22 years old, he said. Oh wow, only 22? Those disciples up there are probably older than you, the elder said. The few other elders around him got surprised too. Haha, I doubt that is true, Ning said trying to sound humble. The few elders talked for a little longer as another set of fights took place in the arena. Some of the fights took a long while, while some were over in an instant. Ning checked the cultivation base of every single one that came to the stage and was honestly surprised at how weak everyone was. Even though he thought that after comparing the disciples with himself, the strongest disciple on the Blue Dragon sect was at the 8th Qi Condensation Realm, and the strongest disciple on the Red Tiger sect was on the 8th level of body cultivation. He had them both beat in their own game, however, he didn't tell anyone that. He was simply a doctor and wasn't even a disciple, so he would just take the five spirit stone he was given until his system would come back and then make some other plans. The elders switched places and the referees changed. The disciples fight kept on continuing for the next hour or so. The battles themselves were quite fun to watch and honestly very entertaining. However, since Ning was always on edge about someone needing immediate medical care every time the fight got intense, he couldn't enjoy the better battles at all. In the end, the entire first round of battles ended and not a single one of them required Ning's attention. The second phase of the battle started. The 112 people that fought in the first round were now down to 56. Of them, 32 belonged to the Red Tiger sect and the remaining belonged to the Blue Dragon sect. The body cultivators were in general stronger than the Qi cultivators and were thus coming out on top in the competition. Soon, the host made them all pick up small pieces of paper to choose their opponents again and the second round began. This time, the arena was transformed so that only two stages were available at the same time, two of the elders walked up as referees. Four disciples walked up to the stage once their numbers were called and thus the next round of battle began. This round of battle was way more intense, since the strong ones were already filtered, those who remained were all stronger in general. Ning got to see some very intense fighting from such a matchup. Although it couldn't bring forth the same thrill as when he fought those blue-skinned women, seeing two very strong cultivators fight each other had a special charm to it. While the Blue Dragon sect disciples used various different methods, sending out blasts of energy and using weird chi techniques, the Red Tiger sect disciples would always fight in close combat with their bodies and fists. Even when they did use weapons, they would use swords and spears and go into close quarters for those fights too. Ning waited for his role in the tournament to heal the injured, but no such problem ever arose. One after another, disciples were called to the stage as it was their turn to fight, and before anyone knew it, the second round of battles had ended too. Ah, that was great, wasn't it? One of the elders sitting close to Ning asked. I wasn't expecting such intense battles when you mixed together two different battle styles, another elder said. The disciples this time around are stronger than they were three years ago, aren't they? Another elder asked. The sect leaders must be really happy with the batch of core disciples this time around, another elder said while looking at the podium among the audience that housed the sect leaders and other important elders. Ning looked towards them once and looked back to the stage. After a few minutes of the resting period, the host walked up to the stage and spoke. We now have 28 contestants remaining. Of them, the winner from the next 14 battles will be guaranteed to go to the triennial tournament. However, don't be worried because even if you lose, due to there being 15 participation limit, one of you who fails may be able to get into the roster if you manage to impress the sect leaders. So, even if it seems unlikely that you will win, try your best and you might just luck out, the host said. The disciples started to get unusually excited once they heard that. One more win and they were guaranteed to go to the triennial tournament. Everyone was getting hyped up and with that, the third and final round of battles started. This time, the disciples were made to go up onto the stage for one battle at a time. The first battle was between a blue dragon disciple and a red tiger disciple. The blue robed and red robed disciples walked up onto the stage and this time, the host himself stayed as the referee. As soon as the competition started the two fighters got into action. The blue-robed disciple took out a sword, 
while the red-robed disciple simply ran forward with his bare body. The fight was intense as one person continuously tried to create some distance with their sword while the other one tried to close the gap to not let the other one gain any advantage. The fight came to a standstill as neither one could gain an advantage over the other. In the end, the red-robed disciple took the brunt of one of the blue-robed disciple's sword attacks and got in close to defeat them. The red-robed disciple's arms were bloody, but he had won. Ning immediately ran up to the stage and helped get the disciple down. Once off the stage, he immediately created a simple paste to help close the bleeding and heal the wound. Thankfully, your bones aren't broken so you will be fine. Just try not to do anything extreme for the next five days, Ning said to the red-robed disciple. Thank you, doctor, the person said and left with a big smile on his face, he had won. Ning went back to his seat and looked at the second match that had started between two blue dragon sect disciples. This one was a little better as they could both fight freely without fishing for advantage between the two. Before long, one of them came out as a clear winner, and soon after that, the third match started. The third match was between a female body cultivator and a male cultivator that played music. This was a very interesting match as neither knew how to fight against the other. The body cultivator couldn't close the gap since she didn't know what sort of weird techniques the male cultivator would have, and the male cultivator's long-distance attacks were mostly useless since the girl's ears were very strong and the sound didn't affect them as much. She didn't have chi to block her ears, but she didn't need to given how strong they naturally were. Soon, they came to a standstill. The girl finally managed to win after deciding to do the same thing the first guy did and took an attack directly to get to the male cultivator and tossed him off the stage. As such the third match was done as well. Similarly, ten more matches took place, each with its own magic and wonders to show. Out of the five blue dragon sect disciples, and five red tiger sect disciples managed to win. Finally, the last match of the day was going to commence. Two contestants walked onto the stage. One was a tall, handsome-looking man with long flowing hair. The other was a bald man with a well-muscled body. The first person was a disciple of the Blue Dragon sect, and the second person was a disciple of the Red Tiger sect. The host was the referee for this match and this was the final battle of the competition. The blue-robed man took out a long spear, while the red-robed man took out a small metal club. Oh, that's an unusual weapon, Ning thought. However, given his extreme physical strength, that will like work very well against the enemy if he can get close, Ning thought. With a single shout from the host, the match started. The red-robed man immediately dashed forward to get close and attack, but the blue-robed man didn't have such ideas. Instead, he jumped backward and at the same time attacked with his spear, sending out purple slices towards the bald man. The bald man stopped the attack with his club but was in return forced to stop. He once again followed behind the blue-robed man but the blue-robed man used some sort of movement technique and managed to easily dodge the bald man's attack. Once he created some distance, he once again let out attacks with his spears. This time the attacks were much faster and stronger. The bald man barely managed to put up his club, but two of the flying attacks managed to get through and hit the bald man's face, leaving two small cuts along his cheeks. Grr, the bald man grunted and looked at the blue-robed man angrily before following him. The red-robed man kept on following his opponent for a few more turns before he finally managed to corner him. Seeing that there was no more way for him to run away, he finally stood his ground and fought with his spear. Clang a moderately loud sound rang as the spear and the club rang. The bald man was a little surprised seeing a chi cultivator being strong enough to block his attack. Still, he tried to press on an attack. He brought the club back and slammed it down once more. The blue-robed man hit the club from the side and slid it down his left side, barely missing his shoulders. With the same movement, he then pushed forth his spear and cut the right side of the bald man's face, introducing another cut along his face. He then escaped from the corner and started running around to send out long-distance attacks. That fighting style is quite cowardly don't you guys think? One of the red-robed elders near Ning said. Yes, it is. However, that doesn't mean it's a bad fighting style especially since it works, one of the blue-robed elders said. Sigh, I can't argue against that, however, we are used to seeing more brutal and intense fights in the Red Tiger sect. Seeing such a cowardly approach to a battle just makes the victory feel underserved, another red-robed elder said. I think that is because the disciples aren't used to fighting someone that just wants to go into close combat. The closest fighters they fight are sword users, 
and even they don't ever come this close during battles, a blue-robed elder said. Yeah, I even explained to a few of them that despite not having the same body strength, their chi will make up for in strength. But they seem to ignore that and just run around. I think they will understand that fighting head-on is not so bad against a body cultivator if they were made to fight with them a few more times, a blue-robed elder said. Yes. Also, our disciples only focus on the body and never techniques. I am going to force them to learn some weapon techniques or movement techniques next. That should help them a lot in the triennial tournament, another red-robed elder said. Ning was watching the competition at the same time he was listening to the elders. He knew that the qi cultivators in the fights were inexperienced and that the body cultivators would be a lot better if they had a little more qi cultivation as well. The fight on the stage reached an intense moment. The bald fighter had more than a few cuts on his body and was unnaturally angry. He hadn't managed to land a single hit until now. Due to this, the blue-robed disciple started getting cocky. He started teasing the red-robed man and sent out verbal remarks. However, he didn't calculate the limit the bald man was willing to go in the fight. Suddenly, the bald man started running towards him. The blue-robed man prepared his spear and got ready to block. However, the red-robed man threw the club as soon as he was close. The blue-robed man was caught off guard. He blocked the club and parried it to go behind him, however, he missed the bald man that had jumped behind the club as well. The blue-robed man tried to bring back the spear and managed to hit the red-robed man in the left shoulder, but that wasn't enough to stop him. With a single punch to the face, he sent the blue-robed skidding across the stage and then onto the ground near Ning. Ning rushed forward to check up on the disciple, but it seemed the bald man was not done with his attack, he was still angry from the teasing. When the host was focused on the blue-robed man, the bald man took out the spear on his shoulder and ran forward to reach for his club before jumping directly onto the blue-robed man on the ground. The host turned around and saw the bald man jump but didn't realize in time that he was trying to attack the opponent who was already down. The bald man landed directly in front of the blue-robed man and let down a massive swing with an angry face. Bang dust flew everywhere as the sound reverberated throughout the entire arena. People gasped when they saw the bald man attack his already down opponent. What are you doing? The host shouted and flew to where the bald man was. The different elders nearby ran up front as well. Even the important elders from the audience had come down. One of the elders blew away the dust and was finally getting to witness the scene in front of them. Ahead, was the blue robed man on the ground with his entire face bleeding. The red robed man was right next to him, however, the club had never reached his target. In between the two was Ning who had managed to casually catch the club mid-swing. He looked to the shocked red-robed man and said, don't attack a man who is already defeated. Ning then pulled away from the club and threw it behind him in front of the shocked disciple. The elders ran up and started scolding the red-robed man who still wasn't out of his shock. The strongest attack of his was blocked just like that by the person in front of him. He looked very young to his eyes, but the strength was not what he was expecting. Are you, okay? Dr. Ning? One of the elders asked. Ah yes, I am fine, Ning said and started treating the disciple in front of him. His nose was broken from the punch and Ning thus needed to immediately stop the bleeding before proceeding to fix it. He used a bunch of materials to up medicine to stop the bleeding and then bandage the nose. The disciple was unconscious, so he asked someone to take him to the clinic. Ning then stood up and marched straight towards the bald man with a serious face. The bald man was a little scared seeing Ning walk directly to him. The elders also got a little apprehensive. Brother Ning, I am sorry, that was my fault. I thought the competition was over after the final punch and got careless. Please let go of this disciple's mistake, the host said. Ning made a weird face but didn't stop. The other red-robed elder tried to stop Ning but Ning was already in front of the disciple. He immediately grabbed the disciple's shoulder and tore off his robes. The elder tried to stop him but then realized what he was doing. You are bleeding quite bad. Sit down, Ning said. He was trying to treat the disciple. The other elders took a sigh of relief and laughed at themselves for thinking Ning was petty enough to attack a disciple. Ning quickly made a paste and applied it both to the shoulders and the man's face and told him it was going to be okay. Once the disciple walked away, Ning turned around, only to find a buff man with short hair right in front of him. I apologize for my disciple's misbehavior, doctor the man said. Ning recognized the man. That was just a young man being impulsive. You have nothing to apologize for, sect leader, Ning said. 
The man in front of him was the sect leader of the Red Tiger sect, named Gion. Dr. Ning, are you alright? Prezo walked up to him. Ah yes, Elder Prezo. I am fine, he said. Ha ha, of course, you would be. You are Anya's master. It would be weird if you actually got hurt, Prezo said. Hum, Anya's master. What does that mean, the third elder? Gion asked. Ah, sect leader. Dr. Ning was the one that taught Anya to cultivate and got her to how strong she was, Prezo said. Oh, that is surprising, Gion said. Yelka, the sect leader of the Blue Dragon sect walked forward and asked, Are you truly okay, Dr. Ning? Ning nodded and said, Yes. But, your hand? Is it not hurt by the attack? The sect leader asked curiously. Any normal person would be quite injured if they had to stop such a strong attack with their bare hands. See, I'm fine, Ning said while showing his hands. Whoa. You are very strong, Dr. Ning. To think you are so strong while being a doctor. Not to mention you are only 22 years old right now, one of the elders said from the side. Suddenly, all the major elders' eyes went wide in the crowd. Dr. Ning, you are only 22 years old right now? Yelka asked. Yes. I haven't kept track of my age for a while, but I should be less than 23 years right now, Ning said. Yelka looked towards Gion and gave a knowing look. Gion too gave a knowing look and nodded, as if to confirm the other person's idea. The elders looked at them weirdly, while the higher status ones seemed to realize what was up. Dr. Ning, Yelka said. Would you mind joining the sect as a disciple? He asked. Huh? Ning was surprised. What brought this along? He wondered. I don't think I will stick around this island long enough to want to stay as a disciple of the sect, Ning said. Ah, oh, that sucks, Gion said. When do you plan on leaving? He asked. Um, in around six months, Ning said. The two sect leaders whose eyes were downtrodden suddenly seemed to be revitalized. In six months? That's perfect, Gion said. Ning was surprised. Dr. Ning, the thing is, we want you to join the sect so that we can have you take part in the competition. You are so young and so strong. You will be a major asset to the island if you were to take part in the triennial tournament in five months, Yelka said. I, Ning started thinking. He was only going to be there for half a year, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to join. Okay, he said with determination. The sect leader and elder smiled and welcomed Ning. As such, Ning was now a disciple of the Blue Dragon sect just so he could take part in the triennial tournament. All right, everyone. The competition is over. These 15 disciples of our Blue Dragon sect and Red Tiger sect are going to take part in the triennial tournament, the host spoke out loud. Um, host. Why is there an elder in the midst of the disciples? Yeah, wasn't the final participant going to be someone from the losing group? Why is there an elder amongst them? Numerous complaints appeared from the group. Dr. Ning is our physician, however, he is also very young and talented. He has a high cultivation base and is very strong. As such, under the dual decision of both the sect leaders, we have taken Dr. Ning as a disciple. If you have any complaints, go talk to the sect leaders, the host said. No one was stupid enough to question the decision of the two sect leaders, so as such, the competition ended. The next two months passed just like that. While Ning was a disciple in name, he was still the physician of the sect. The only difference was that after learning that Ning would soon leave, they had hired another doctor in the last few weeks. So, Ning was finally starting to have some free time. He used this free time to do exactly two things. The first thing he did was use the spirit stones he had to cultivate. A normal spirit stone gave a lot of chi directly to the person and that was helping Ning immensely in speeding up his cultivation. He still needed to keep the chi on his body somehow, but thanks to his earth-shattering, heaven-tempering art, his meridians had gotten very robust. So they could now hold more chi than a normal cultivator. So, after starting using the spirit stones for just a few days, he was starting to feel bloated. However, this was where he suffered his first, real bottleneck. Since he was closing in on the first major realm change in his cultivation, he needed something more than just everyday cultivation. He needed to do something else to advance in his cultivation. Thankfully, there was the library and he had managed to read up on advancing to the foundation establishment realm all he could. I need to condense the chi in my navel area huh? He wondered as he read the information in the book. He read more and came to a general understanding of what he was supposed to do. First of all, he had to condense the chi he already had. Throughout the chi condensation realm, 
he had gathered and condensed them, but now it was time to take it one step further. Since he couldn't collect any more chi, he could only use the chi that was in his body. He closed his eyes and started meditating to slowly jam his chi into his navel area, a place the cultivators liked to call the sea of chi. It was a place that could hold a certain amount of chi, and thus, the more condensed the chi was, the more it could hold. It took some time to condense even the most little amount of chi into the sea of chi. As its name, the chi inside the sea of chi was so thick, that it was basically a liquid that floated around. Which was why it was called a sea in the first place. The condensation couldn't be completed in a single day and took a lot of time. So, he had to stop for the day since his work was going to start again. Over the next few days, he took his spare time and used it to condense his chi. Thanks to his robust meridians that held more chi than normal, it took him a little more than normal cultivators to complete the process. However, he was happy knowing that once he was done, he was probably going to be stronger than normal cultivators once the process was over. Finally, after a week, he witnessed a change in him. The sea of chi that he had to force his chi into was starting to suddenly work on its own and started collecting the chi in his body to condense it. He no longer had to force the chi into the sea as it was now automatic. He still couldn't collect any more chi, so he waited for the chi inside of him to empty into his sea of chi. He just had to use his cultivation technique and the chi would automatically turn into the liquid in his sea of chi. After a few more days of this, he finally managed to completely convert all of his chi. Suddenly, a change occurred. The pores in his body slowly opened up and waste products in his body started getting pushed out. He was experiencing the same thing he did when he first entered the chi condensation realm, and now he was experiencing it again when he was entering the foundation establishment realm. Just as this was happening, another change, much higher in importance was taking place at the same time. Even with his eyes closed, Ning was starting to see everything that was going on in his body. His body, the pores, the waste, the sea of chi, and the chi inside of it, he could see everything. He had finally unlocked divine sense. He wanted to see more with his divine sense but now was not the time, so he focused on the sea of chi. The sea was really tumultuous as new areas were being built around the sea. Slowly, the amount of space for the chi that could be gathered was starting to expand. It expanded such that the amount of chi that could be stored was doubled. It continued to increase and soon it was tripled. After that, it became so large that he could fit four of the current sea in the new space, then five, then six. It kept on going more and more. Finally, when it was ten times as large as it originally was, it stopped and stabilized. Ning had officially entered the foundation establishment realm. Ning didn't bother with anything else and immediately checked his current cultivation. As expected he was in the first realm of foundation establishment. A wave of power unlike before rushed through his body. There was no more chi on his body itself as they were all concentrated on his meridian. He finally opened his eyes and looked at himself. He was filthy. Oh right. Forgot about this. He thought and quickly went to his bath to clean himself. He returned back after 15 minutes or so and went to the fields. He had just entered a new realm and needed to familiarize himself with it. So he went out to do the second thing he could do now that he was free, train. He was given access to the different techniques and he had chosen two of them. He was going to train in them now. The first one was a sword technique. He was now using a sword, and while he had a good technique, he didn't know how to use the sword itself. So he needed a physical sword art that didn't rely on chi. He found a nameless sword technique for now and started learning it. He decided that instead of focusing on learning a good sword art right now, he would instead buy a great one from the system that matched his criteria. Swish his sword moved around in the heavy rainfall, cutting off the raindrop as they were falling. There weren't many disciples on the training ground, so he got a little more space to himself. He started noticing things while practicing that he couldn't before. He could now see his forms due to his divine sense, which was impossible for him before even when he had an omnidirectional vision. Swish 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 he practiced some more and got familiar with his body. He was now a lot faster than before and was much stronger in general. It was his first jump through a major realm and that was a way too massive a jump for him to immediately get used to his new cultivation. Suddenly, he disappeared from the spot and appeared elsewhere. He was very fast and took the rain along with him. He had learned a new, better movement technique called the floating crane's movement technique. The technique allowed the user to effortlessly glide around whether they were on the ground or in the sky. It was also very fast and made it seem like the user disappeared from the initial place. Once Ning was in the other place, 
he once more bent down his body and released his chi to push himself around at a very fast speed. He kept practicing the two swords and movement techniques until it was time for him to go back to the clinic. There weren't many people practicing, so there weren't many people injured either, so, he had quite a free time for the day. He used this time to check up on the new divine sense he had unlocked. He couldn't tell where it originated from or if he had a steady supply of it, but he could feel the new sense emanating out of him. He closed his eyes and tried to look with just his divine sense, it was much better than his omnidirectional vision for sure. Not only could he see all around him, but he could also see in places his eyes couldn't see as well. Behind something, under something, inside something, these were all possible with divine sense. I probably won't have to worry about seeing in places with no light either. That means I won't have to buy that night vision 3 when the system comes back, Ning thought. The range of his divine sense was only 10 meters for now, but he was sure that would slowly increase over time with his cultivation. He spent all the free time of his next two weeks doing nothing but training the new things he had gotten, and he got really good at it. From time to time, the disciples of the sect would call him to practice with them, and he would have no problem beating them. He was too strong for his similarly aged disciples. After the two weeks, he went back to cultivating. He noticed that this cultivation method had changed as well. Every time he drew in chi, it would enter his meridian and stay around until it got little by little condensed into the liquid form that would then get collected in his sea of chi. He was a little disappointed by how slow the process was but took solace in the fact that it was supposed to be slow for everyone. He wouldn't be able to break through as fast as before, but when his system came back, he wouldn't need to. He kept on practicing his cultivation method and the tempering method to increase his chi, body, and mind's strength. Soon, another month passed. The new doctor was fully working now and Ning had much more free time, so, he would now take the time to go to the Red Tiger sect for a few days a week. It had been a while since he had seen Anya, and he wanted to make sure she was doing great. Anya had grown much taller in the eight months he hadn't seen her. She had long flowing hair, wore red female robes, and looked much more feminine now. Wow, you look great, Ning said as he patted her head. Master, you finally came to see me, she said with teary eyes. Sigh, yes. I was busy working and only got free time now. How is your learning going? Did you learn all the medical knowledge I passed you? He asked. He didn't need to ask about her cultivation since he could see that she was already at the seventh level of body cultivation, and the sixth realm of qi condensation. Ning was surprised at how fast she was but didn't say anything. Yes, master. I read everything. I still need practice, but I know all the knowledge, she said. Good. Here is some more advanced knowledge, Ning said and took out two more books he had written in the last three months. Over the last three months, Ning had taken small time out of his free time to write the different knowledge that was in his mind. He had spared no effort during the last time he taught her, but she was too amateur to be handed everything at once. That would just overwhelm her. So instead he had only passed along the basics. Of course, the basic alone was more advanced than anything the people in the pure cleansing sect could have learned. Anya happily took the book and flipped through it. Her eyes turned wide when she saw new knowledge she wasn't aware of previously. Whoa, thank you, master, she said. Ning felt happy seeing her face. Maybe I really like being a teacher, he thought. He spent a bit longer with Anya and returned back to the Blue Dragon sect. He wanted to break through just once more, so he seriously cultivated for the remaining two months. During this period, his time was separated into four parts. Dealing with the disciples' injury along with the new doctor, training new techniques, going to meet Anya from time to time, and cultivating. Cultivation took the majority of the time. Unfortunately, even by the end of the two months period, he couldn't break through. He knew it was impossible, but he was still hoping to be able to do so. He went to visit Anya one last time and said his goodbye. Learning that this was perhaps the final time she was going to see Ning, she cried a lot. Ning got a little teary-eyed as well. He never really got to say goodbye to anyone before. His parents died before he could say goodbye. The orphanage kids left without notice and he himself died with no one to say goodbye to. After reincarnating, he had met Freya, who he couldn't say goodbye to either, and then there were the Clavi people. He cared for the entire village and he couldn't say goodbye to any of them. This was the first time he could properly say his goodbyes, and that made him nearly cry. It's okay. I will come to check up on you when I ever have that ability, Ning said. But, but you will be so far away, can you really come to visit me? Anya asked. Ning smiled a little and said, 
It may be impossible for others, but not for me. Once I am stronger, I can come to visit you in a snap of a finger. Really? Anya was a little skeptical. Of course. So just continue cultivating and learning the books I gave you. Take care of your father and brother. I will see you later. Goodbye. Ning said and patted her on her head one last time before leaving. Anya started crying harder, but Ning didn't turn around. He knew if he did, he wouldn't be able to leave. He kept on walking and left the sect grounds of the Red Tiger sect. He returned to the Blue Dragon sect and rested for the day. He didn't bother treating people, or training, or cultivating. He simply rested for the day and woke up the next day. A knock came on his door. He opened the door and saw a disciple. It's time to leave, senior, he said. Ning nodded. It was time to leave for the triennial tournament. He packed everything that he could and left. There were six Blue Dragon sect disciples staying around with a few elders, and Ning met them. Once they were all there, including the sect leader, they left. They started walking to the northern part of the island, towards the right ear, and met with the people from the Red Tiger sect who were already there. There was a boat waiting for them, and they got on it. Ah, good to see you, Dr. Ning. I hope you can bring glory to the Deep Skull Island, Gion said with a big smile. I will try my best, sect leader, Ning said and started looking at the ocean again. No matter how many times he saw the ocean, it was still very unfamiliar to him. How long will it take us to reach the hub island? Ning asked. Oh, it's quite a long way from here. We have to pass a few islands along the way, so about a day and a few hours. You should just go and do something to pass your time, Gion said. I will do that later. Thank you for telling me, Ning said. He talked with Gion for a bit longer and went to the deck to watch the ocean. He socialized with a few other disciples that were there, however, he could never talk to them as a peer due to his status as a doctor. That made him feel a little isolated. He looked at the ocean and the massive expanse that it was. I see, so this is the speed we will move on huh? No wonder we will reach Hub Island in just a little over a day. The ship is so fast, Ning thought as he looked through the map on his head. The Hub Island was about 2,000 kilometers away from Deep Skull Island. Normally, it would have taken a lot of time to reach there on a boat, but given how fast the boat was, it was going to be much less time. Ning felt the boat with his palm and thought, is this boat a spirit artifact as well? There was no other reason why it would be so fast. After spending a few hours on the deck, he went to his room inside the ship and started cultivating. The chi was quite sparse in the ocean so cultivation didn't help a lot. However, he was body cultivating and tempering his mental strength as well, so he continued it. He left his room from time to time to go outside and see the different islands that he would pass by, but most of the time he just spent holed up in his room. Finally, he felt the ship slowing down after a day. He walked out onto the deck and saw an island not far away. They had finally reached Hub Island. Whoa! Everyone exclaimed when they saw the Hub Island for the first time. Ning knew the general structure of the island, but he too was unaware of exactly how it looked. It was amazing. Even a kilometer away from the shore, he could see the tall pagoda-like buildings deep in the city. The outer houses weren't fancy, but there were many, giving the illusion that there were a lot of people living on this island. A minute later, the boat docked on the shore and everyone got off. There were other boats there too from the other various islands in the scattered isles. From what Ning could read regarding the map of Kumia, there were about 500 islands with a diameter of over a kilometer. He didn't know how many of them were inhabited, all those that were would be coming to this competition for sure. Suddenly, a ship came down from the sky. Whoa, that's a flying ship artifact. Those sects must be very rich, a disciple said. The sect leaders looked at the emblem at the front of the ship and said, Ah, it's the participating group from the Cloud Heaven Island. They are quite rich due to their cloudstone mines that can be used as ingredients for a lot of different artifacts. The disciples nodded when they heard the sect leader say that. Ning looked at the floating ship and was surprised as well. I wonder if they are faster than planes, he wondered. Oh right. Flying is prohibited in the city. You will be in trouble if you do that. You might even get disqualified from the competition, and in a worst case scenario, disqualify the entire island, Yelka said. Everyone nodded in understanding. All right. Let's go register our island and participants. Then we can freely roam the city as we want, Gion said and took the disciples to the registering area. There was a queue of people registering from the other islands, so they had to wait for their turn. Ning looked at the sun and realized that it was only midday, so they had time to spare. Finally, it was their turn to register, and they did. 
The elders registered as guests and the disciples registered as participants. Ning was a participant as well. Everyone was given a talisman that held their name, face, status, and shiora. Ning wondered where he would have to use this, but he didn't have to worry, as the usage for the talisman came pretty soon. Just a little away was a moderately tall wall that was hidden behind the buildings. Only one game was available on the southern side, so they had to pass through here. Anyone without such a talisman would be rejected entry from the city. The Deep Skull Island folks had them, so they were freely allowed to enter the city. Only after entering the city did he realize just how massive it was. The city was actually around a small concave land where the middle of the city was in lesser height than the rest of the city. Whoa, they all said. It was the first time for the disciples to see such an island, so they were truly surprised. The concave city had tall buildings all around it. There were four major roads that connected to the center of the island that was surrounded by an even taller wall than the outside. You see that enclosure? That is where the secret realm lies, the place where the tournament will be held, an elder said. A secret, realm? What's that? Someone asked. Basically, there inside lies a small pocket dimension that had a small space in it. You can freely enter and exit from it, however, it can be manipulated from the outside and so that is where you lots will be participating in a few days," the elder said. All right, you guys will understand it later on. Let's go find our hotel now, according to the register guy, it should be, right over there," Yelka said and started moving. The group walked to the hotel. The hotel was a massive pagoda-style building with nearly three dozen floors. The hotel was sanctioned off for the different participants of the upcoming competition. The group walked up to their floor and stayed there. The tournament starts three days later, so try not to do anything stupid and get yourself disqualified. You can go out and visit the city, or stay inside the hotel until the tournament starts. It's your choice. Just make sure to return back to the hotel every night. Also, try not to start a rivalry with another island. We don't want enemies before the competition even starts, Gion said. Everyone nodded and went to their own rooms. The floor had plenty of rooms for them, so Ning chose a random one and entered. The room was not very large, but it was enough for Ning to just spend a few days in. He slumped down on the bed with the soft mattress and closed his eyes. He was a little tired from the journey, so he decided to lay off on visiting the city for the day. He would do that the next two days. However, he wouldn't just sleep around. He got up from the bed and sat in a lotus position and started meditating. Vortex of Qi slowly gathered around him and entered his body. Whoa! He thought when he realized that the quality of chi in this city was much higher than either the Deep Skull City or the Starsight City. Is it because of the shape of the city? Since it's concave, more chi can gather in it. Or is it because I am closer to the main northern continent, so the chi is much better? He wondered. He didn't have an answer right now, and would only have one once he went to the mainland. He ignored all thought and cultivated throughout the rest of the day and night, only waking up in the morning the next day. He finally stopped and got up, he would now go visit the city. It was early in the morning when Ning walked out of the hotel. The city was already alive and people were walking around in a hurry to get to their destination. Only a few cultivators seemed to be relaxed and were just walking around. Ning looked towards the place downhill that had the actual main markets in it and walked towards there. He looked around the roads at the different shops and started buying stuff he liked, thanks to being a doctor for so long. He had a lot of money saved up that he hadn't used at all. He bought clothes, food, different trinkets, and other items that he didn't necessarily need but was simply buying them cause he could afford them. He went to restaurants to eat, went to the library to read up on different things, went to the market to buy ingredients for different medicines, etc. He spent more than half a day doing just that before returning back to his hotel room. He then cultivated for the remainder of the day and the night. He felt like he had progressed a lot as a first foundation establishment realm cultivator, but he still wasn't full. He could only know that he reached the breakthrough point previously when he started feeling the lack of chi during his cultivation. However, now it was different. He could simply check the level of chi in his sea of chi and know how far along he was. From what he could see with his divine sense, his liquid chi had filled around 95% of the second level. So he was not far off from reaching the second foundation establishment realm. Once he filled that level, he would fill the third level to reach the third foundation establishment realm. So on and so forth until he filled all tenth level and reached the golden core realm. However, he was still very far away from that, so he would worry about it when he reached there. Once again, it was morning and he stopped his cultivation. 
he had learned about something interesting that was going to take place today and was very much looking forward to it. He went around the city for a few hours in the morning and finally came upon the place he wanted to visit. The auction house. It was still a few minutes away from opening and there were people gathered outside of the auction house. He could see many different people waiting around outside. Suddenly, someone tapped on his shoulders. He released his divine sense to check who it was and turned around with a genuine smile. Mr. Kazir, it's nice to see you again. I hope you are doing good. The one that had just tapped him was none other than Kazir. He looked to the side and saw Michaela there as well so he greeted her too. Ah, it really is you, volunteer Ning. I almost couldn't recognize you with that long hair, Kazir said. Kazir seemed a lot older than a year ago when Ning had left the Starside City. Haha, yes. Are you guys here for the tournament too? Starside City must be doing good enough if it can send people here, Ning said. Kazer's face frowned all of a sudden and he simply just shook his head. I'm afraid Starside City is no more. We tried to stay and keep it going for as long as we could, but when there is no public staying in the city anymore, it's hard to run a business going. So, both Mist Origin Sect and we had to move to separate cities. Mist Origin Sect moved to the Grey Forest Island, and we moved to the Bluestone Island. So, today we are here representing Bluestone Island instead of Starside like we did the past years, Kazir said. Oh, Ning got a little sad hearing that. It seemed that a sect couldn't last in a place where the people didn't stay. Mist Origin Sect has beasts to feed. Without the materials from the city, it would be hard for them to survive, he thought. Michaela suddenly nudged Kazir and nodded her head towards somewhere. Ning turned his head to see a group of people walk into the auction house even though the others weren't allowed yet. Every single one of the orange robe wearing people was allowed free access to the auction house. Ah, I see they are here as well, Kazir said. Who are they? Ning asked. They are the dazzling sky sect from the hero island and are the strongest sect in the scattered isles. Their sect leader is a golden core cultivator and thus they get a lot of fame and fortune. I hear they have exceptionally competent participants this time around. Those kids just now must be it, Kazir said. Ning hadn't managed to catch their faces since they had entered so quickly but didn't think much about it. He would do what he could and leave the rest to fate. The hero island, that's a little up north from here. Are they stronger because they are north? Ning wondered. He talked with Kazir for a few more minutes and then the auction house opened. People entered in droves and Ning didn't want to be late either. I will see you later, volunteer Ning. We too have a room to ourselves, so we will be going there, Kazir said and left. Ning nodded and walked to where the rest of the people were being taken to. He finally entered a massive hall with thousands of seats inside, he walked to a random free one and sat on it. He looked around and saw people seating down around him as quickly as they could to get their hands on a seat. Soon the thousands of seats filled very quickly and suddenly there were no more people entering, it must be first come first serve, Ning wondered. He waited around a few minutes, listening to the murmur of the crowd when suddenly the curtain on the stage opened up. The auction was now starting. As the red curtains parted, light shined onto the stage revealing a vacant podium. No one was on the stage right now, but that didn't mean it was going to remain that way. Footsteps sounded from the stage and suddenly everyone grew quiet. A young girl in a red dress walked out from backstage and stood in front of the entire audience. Her fair, Confident face and a wide smile showed that this was not her first time here. Welcome everyone, to the Titan Auction House. I, Nia, will be your auctioneer for the day, she said. The auction will now start. A trolley of items was hauled out from backstage, each one hidden behind a black cloth. Ning tried to guess what it was but the shape was impossible to guess. Nia took off one of the cloths and revealed a talisman. Our first item is this talisman. This is a defensive talisman that can block a single serious attack from a fourth foundation establishment realm cultivator. It's a single use talisman and will be destroyed after it had blocked the attack. The item will start selling with a price of 140 gold coins. Your bids must have a 5 gold coin minimum increase, she said, please begin. This was Ning's first time in an auction hall so he was very surprised when the crowd suddenly erupted into a cluster of sounds as everyone started bidding on the item. 150 gold coins, 155 gold cons, 165 gold coins, 170 gold coins. Ning was surprised how much the people were steadily increasing the bid. Is this item worth that much? He wondered, but then soon realized that the people bidding for it were in the Qi condensation realm. It's probably worth it to them, 
he thought. Thankfully, Ning didn't need the item, so he didn't bother bidding. However, he was curious to see that if the first item was this, what the following items would be like. Soon the bidding reached 240 coins, 100 coins higher than the original price, and stopped. Ning looked up and saw a slew of rooms on a floor higher than the one he was sitting in. The current bid that won the talisman was from one of these exact rooms. Congratulations to the VIP guest on room 32 on winning this talisman, Nia announced. Some people clapped, some grumbled, while others just waited for the next item. Ning just looked at the rooms on the upper floor. So that's where the VIPs are staying, huh? Those dazzling sect fellows must be up there. Now that I think about it, Mr. Kazir and Michaela may be up there as well, Ning thought. Nia walked up to the trolley and removed another cloth to reveal the next item on the auction. A book The book was a cultivation technique known as killing flames. It helped the user create fire with extremely high temperatures that one could use to fight their opponents. The higher one's cultivation base, the better the fire would be. Nia started the bid with 150 gold coins and soon it reached 280 gold coins where a VIP guest from the room above acquired it. More and more items started being auctioned off. Sometimes it was a brush to make talismans. Sometimes it was a dress with defensive techniques. There were a few books that either taught knowledge, cultivation technique, or a cultivation method. Those sold for quite a lot. Ning tried to bid for a few of them, but he was very easily outbid especially by the ones in the VIP room. He didn't really want those items, so he let go of the bidding war each time. Slowly the price of the items was getting higher and higher. After a while, artifacts started being sold. The first artifact that Nia showed was a low-grade spirit artifact armor that could block all damages from anyone below the second foundation establishment realm. This was heavily preferred by everyone around him and immediately everyone started bidding. Ning didn't need such a low-level defense so he just stayed put and didn't bid on anything. The surrounding people, especially the younger ones were rabid and bid whenever someone else didn't. The armor that started at 600 gold coins soon reached 1500 gold coins in the bid and it was still going up. Ning was really surprised how much these people were willing to pay for armor that didn't do a lot in his opinion. Body cultivation is quite good huh? These people wouldn't be throwing away money like this if they just knew it, he thought. The final price of the item was 2,000 gold coins and it was bought by a rich person in the VIP rooms. Damn, that's what I made in two months while working as a doctor, and these people just spend it like this huh? Their sects must be really well off, he thought. Once the bid was over, Nia passed along the armor and brought out something else. What she held was a long staff-like object wrapped around in black cloth. She brought it out in the spotlight to show it to the crowd as she opened the cloth and revealed what was inside the cloth. Oh, Ning thought in a little surprise when he saw what it was. Inside the cloth was a spear. The handle was made up of a deep blue material and was about a meter and a half in length. The blade was abnormally long at about half a meter and was made up of white, silver-like metal. Overall, the spear looked very unique and one of a kind. Nia moved the spear around to show it to the audience and spoke, this spear is called the Jade Sapphire Spear. The body of this spear is made of ocean jade and the blade is made up of metal sapphire. It is one of the best low-grade spirit artifacts sold in the auction as of yet. So, the starting bid for this spear will start at 1,000 gold coins, and each bid much as a 10 gold coin increment. Please begin. 10 10 gold coins, 10 20 gold coins, 10 30 gold coins. 1100 gold coins. Before most people could even realize the bidding had started, the bid had already increased by 100 gold coins. 1110 gold coins, Ning bid as well, but his voice was quickly drowned in other bids of higher value. Ning then decided to keep quiet and wait for the number of people bidding to lower. It didn't take long for the price of the item to double as the bid reached 2000 gold coins. Only then did it even remotely slow down. It took a bit longer for the bid to reach 2100 gold coins when there were only three people bidding. Two people were from the VIP rooms on the upper floor and one of them was from the hall below. 2 minus 2160 gold coins the guy on the hall below hesitated for a bit before increasing the bid it didn't seem like he had much more money to bid 2170 gold coins one of the people from the vip room bid he could hear a young man's voice but couldn't see anyone there 2180 gold coins a much elderly sounding voice shouted from the vip room 
The man on the ground lost all hope seeing the two of them instantly increase the bid and decided to drop out. 2,190 gold coins, the younger man in the VIP rooms bid. 2,200 gold coins, the older man bid. The back and forth went on for a bit longer until the older man started hesitating. 2,450 gold coins, the older man bid after nearly 5 seconds, instead of the instant bid he was doing a bit ago. 2,460 gold coins, the young man didn't hesitate at all. The old man deliberated for a bit and bid, 2480 gold coins. 2,490 gold coins, the young man once again bid instantly. The old man didn't bid any longer. There was silence for a bit and then he finally spoke, sigh, all right you win. I don't want that spear anymore. Thank you, elder, the young man spoke from inside the VIP room. Haha, since there are no more bidders, I think we can proceed to the next item, the man said. Nia on the stage nodded and said, going 2,490 gold coins, once. Going 24, 2,500 gold coins. Ning decided to finally step in and bid. The audience was a little surprised that someone from the lower hall was actually bidding so high. 2,510 gold coins, the young man bid without hesitation still. 2,520 gold coins, Ning wasn't stopping either. 2,530 gold coins. 2,540 gold coins, 2,550 gold coins, 2,560 gold coins. The bid continuously increased as neither of them backed down. Soon, the bid reached 2,800 at which point the young man in the VIP room started to get a little nervous. He had quite a few gold coins, but he still needed to save some for the better items that would be sold later on. So, he decided to negotiate. Brother. I have a spear I currently use that costs around 1500 gold coins. I will sell it to you for only 500 gold coins if you let me take this spear, the man said. Oh, Ning was a little surprised that the man was actually so desperate for this spear. Unfortunately, he wanted it as well. Is your 1500 gold spear as good as the one currently being auctioned? Ning asked. Um, no, not Ray. 2820 gold coins, Ning didn't even let him finish and directly bid. The young man was shocked and continued bidding, but at some point he decided to stop. Spending so much money on an item like this wasn't worth it to him. Especially since he already had a good enough spear of his own. Ning waited for the next bid but nothing actually came. Nia realized this as well and decided to end the bid. Any more bids? She asked, but nobody responded. 3070 gold coins going once. 3070 gold coins going twice. 3070 gold coins going thrice. Sold to the gentleman on seat 583, Nia announced to the crowd. The spear was taken away by the staff and soon a staff member walked up to him in the crowd and handed him a slip of paper. That was to identify that he was the one that bought the spear. Ning let out his divine sense to check the paper and felt some sort of energy in it. Oh, it's a talisman. Nearly didn't recognize it because of its shape, he thought. Do I really need a talisman to show that I am the bidder? Or are they afraid I will run away after bidding and are using this as a tracker? He wondered. Either way, it didn't matter to him since he would buy the spear. To be honest, he didn't have to buy the spear. He could have simply waited for a little longer and he could have bought a better spear from the system. But he didn't know exactly when his system was coming back and needed a spear for the upcoming competitions. The auction went as per usual, but nothing came up that really interested Ning anymore. There were a few cool stuff that was put up on auction but none of it was something he wanted. The most valuable item sold on the auction was actually a journal of a cultivator's journey from being immortal all the way to him reaching the nascent soul stage. It had vivid explanations of what he did and how he reached that stage. Unfortunately, the cultivator was long dead, but the information lived on. That book was sold for exactly 50 spirit stones. Once the auction was done, Ning walked to the staff who took him to get his spear. He paid the bid price and stored the spear in storage space before walking out of the auction house. Along the way, orange clothed, handsome looking man, kept staring at him as he left. Ning didn't understand at first but soon realized that that was probably the man he stole the spear away from. Whatever, not like he can do anything inside the city anyway, Ning thought and went to visit the rest of the city for the day. Ning spent the rest of the day just roaming around the city. But the novelty of the city had worn off by the second day so he just went back to his hotel and started cultivating. He took out a spirit stone and held it in his hand. Sigh, 
I spent nearly all of my gold in the auction today. If I had bid any more, I would have had to resort to using these spirit stones to buy the spear, he thought. He could use the spirit stones for speeding up his cultivation, so he really didn't want to use any of it. Fortunately, the auction hadn't come to that. So, he started cultivating and used a spirit stone to speed up the chi gathering process. His sea of chi was filling much faster and it wouldn't be long before he could break through to the next realm. So, he took it slow and cultivated for the entire night. The next day he woke up. Today was the day of the competition. To be honest, he was very much looking forward to it. The last few months, he had been training different techniques very diligently and he couldn't wait to test them out in real battle. He walked out of the room to go meet up with the sect leaders. Yelka and Gion were both outside their rooms with a bunch of other disciples. Sect leader, do we leave now? Ning asked. Yes, the tournament should begin in around two hours. We should start going there soon. Let's wait for the other disciples to come, Gion said. They waited for a few more minutes as Ning decided to ask a few questions. Gion answered what he could about the competition, but according to him, the competition differed a little each time. However, one thing he did confirm was that the competition was separated into two parts. The first one was a normal competition where people did stuff to earn a chance to get into the second competition. The second competition was where the true fun of the competition, the 1v1 fight took place. Ning nodded after learning all of this and couldn't wait for the tournament to really begin before he could really find out what he was supposed to do in them. Soon the other disciples came outside and everyone started walking out of the hotel. The downward slope to the center of the town was filled with hundreds of people walking there. Even though it was 8 a.m. in the morning, everyone seemed to be overly hyped for the competition. Are the non-participants allowed in? Ning asked along the way, shooting the question to anyone that would answer it. Uh, yes but they don't have to, Yelka said. They don't have to? Ning asked with a confused face. Outside the walls of the arena, the hub island shows the inner happenings of the secret realm to everyone. So regardless of whether one enters or not, they can see the entire show from outside, Yelka said. Actually, entering the arena costs 100 coins per day, so the audience actually prefers watching from outside, Gion added. Oh, but you guys get to go it right? Ning asked. Yeah, there is a maximum limit of 10 extra people per island, but we get to go in, Yelka said. Maximum limit? So if others come with them, they can't enter? Ning asked with surprise. They can, but the island would have to pay in their stead. There are a total of 200 islands participating in this competition. If they allowed everyone to enter for free, the arena would be filled by the participating sects alone. So there is a maximum limit on it, Gion said. Ning nodded in understanding and didn't ask any further questions. Soon they reached the arena at the center of the city. There were hordes of people staying around the arena, but thankfully, the tournament holders had made an open area for the incoming participants to walk through. Ning looked around and was truly shocked at how many people were participating. 15 people from 200 different islands, 3,000 people, he thought in shock. He hadn't bothered to calculate until now, but now that he did, he couldn't fathom the number. 3,000 didn't sound a lot, especially when considering the size and population of the planet. But when Ning saw the numbers he was shocked. These wasn't the real numbers either as they were scattered throughout the four sides of the arena, trying to get in. But just seeing the hundreds of different colored robes, all with high cultivation bases, made Ning realize how big this world was. He was sure that even without the crowd trying to watch the competition, the outside of the arena would be full of just the people trying to get in. It took them 15 minutes to finally reach the gate and show their paper slips to get in. As soon as he got in, Ning was once again surprised, this time by what was inside the arena. The arena was a large stone slab in the middle of the field surrounded by stadium-like seats that could house tens of thousands of people. Yelka and Gion took their group and walked to an area full of stone seats and sat there. Let's just wait for the tournament to start, Gion said. Ning looked around the stadium and saw it slowly fill up, but until now, it was only the participants. There was not a single audience member that had come in yet. He then looked at the middle of the stadium where lied a single stone stage and searched for something. He looked around for a few minutes, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't find any clue about it. Not wanting to search anymore, he decided to simply ask the sect leader. Where is the secret realm? He asked, catching the attention of the two sect leaders who suddenly had mysterious smiles on their faces. If it were so easily found, it wouldn't be a secret now, would it? 
Suddenly a small buzzing sound appeared from the stage and a small, circular white light flashed in there. Ning immediately turned his head to look at it and was surprised by what he was saw. The white glow was abnormal as it didn't originate from anything on the stage and it looked like the space itself bent on the stage. As soon as it appeared, however, the light disappeared and the stage was back to normal. It wasn't only Ning that was surprised. The other disciples that had come along were a little surprised too at the paranormal event that had just taken place. Ning could see people from the other islands getting curious as to what had just happened as well. What was that? Someone asked. Tisk. And here we thought of keeping it a surprise until later on. Sigh. Whatever. That is the opening to the secret realm. Once you enter there, you are teleported to the secret realm, Dion said with a disappointed face. What is the secret realm exactly? Another universe? Ning asked. Another universe? Ha ha. You think way too grand, Dr. Ning. No, it's either just a simple pocket dimension or the more possible answer. A simple portal to another location somewhere on this planet, Yelka said. Ning finally understood a little. Maybe I will know if the place is on the map or not once I enter, he thought. There were no more such flashes. People steadily entered the arena and soon the arena was almost filled. A group of people walked onto the stage and stopped around the location where the white portal had previously flashed. What are they doing? Ning asked the group. Ah, they are finally here. The tournament will begin very soon then. Gion said. Just keep watching, you will see. The five men who had just entered the stage suddenly took out a long metal rod with a weirdly iridescent cloth at the top. Is that, a formation flag? Ning wondered. He was correct. The five people had taken out formation flags and planted them in five separate spots around the place where the portal had appeared. They then placed a bunch of spirit stones just inside the formation they had just created and started silently activating it. Soon, Everyone in the arena could see turbulence in the space inside the formation. The space started twisting and turning until there was a tear in it. A visible crack in the space shocked everyone who was new to the place. Subsequently, the portal appeared once more. However, this time, it wasn't wibbly wobbly like the last time and seemed very stable. The five men had managed to make the portal stay open permanently. Is it as stable as it looks? Ning asked. Yes. They do this every three years, so they are quite good at it now. See? Not a single fluctuation in space, Dion said. Now that the portal is ready, I think you guys will have to leave soon. Remember, help each other whenever you can. Of course, that is if you happen to meet each other, Yelka said. What do you mean if we happen to meet each other, sect leader? Someone asked. Well, basically, you will all be separated once you enter. So, when you are inside you will have to fend for yourself, Yelka said. Good morning everyone. I am your host for the tournament. My name is Trivix. Before I announce anything else, will the participants please gather onto the stage? Trivix said. All right. Good luck to you guys. Do as well as you can. No pressure, Gion said. Have faith in your training, you guys will do fine, Yelka said, before sending off the participants. Ning and the other 14 disciples as well as the other 3,000 participants walked down to the arena nearly filling the entire thing. Wow. I see this every single tournament, and this still somehow surprises me. There are always so many of you, the host said. He waited for the rest of the people to come down and then started speaking. All right. Listen up carefully. I will now explain how the tournament will be held. The tournament will be divided into two segments. The first one will take place in the secret realm, while the second one will take place on this stage, the host said. The one starting right now is the one that will take place in the secret realm. For this tournament, each one of you will be given a bunch of storage bags and a single talisman that you will have to forever keep on your chest. Your task inside the secret realm is to either gather ingredients or kill the monster and then gather their corpses as much as you can. Each ingredient and monster will give you a certain number of points that will be recorded into your talisman. The talisman is also your saving grace. The talisman will immediately teleport you out of the secret realm if you ever are about to face a fatal injury. If those damage or injuries are to be caused by the participants, you will lose half of your points then and there to your killer, the host said. The participants got a little nervous as well as exciting learning that one did not have to hold back in fear of accidentally killing the other. The host continued. Here is how we will count your points. The points for the ingredients are very random and are determined based on their rarity, so you can't know for yourself how many points they will get you. You can however see how many points you have in your talisman at any points and find out. 
As for the monsters that you will kill, most of the monsters are only up to the ninth realm of chi condensation, so you will get points based on what realm there are. The monsters in foundation realm that you will rarely find will start at 50 points with 5 extra points for each higher realm it is in. 